On 28 June 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria, heir presumptive to the Austro-Hungarian throne, and his wife, Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg, were shot dead in Sarajevo by Gavrilo Princip, one of a group of six assassins coordinated by Dani Loelic, a Bosnian Serb and a member of the Black Hand Secret Society. The political objective of the assassination was to break off Austria-Hungary's South Slav provinces so they could be combined into a Yugoslavia. The assassins' motives were consistent with the movement that later became known as Young Bosnia. The assassination led directly to the First World War when Austria-Hungary subsequently issued an ultimatum to the Kingdom of Serbia, which was partially rejected. Austria-Hungary then declared war. In charge of these Serbian military conspirators was Chief of Serbian Military Intelligence Dragutin Dmitrijevic, his right-hand man Major Vojislav Tankarzik, and the spy Rade Malo Babic. Tankarzik armed the assassins with bombs and pistols and trained them. The assassins were given access to the same clandestine network of safe houses and agents that Malo Babic used for the infiltration of weapons and operatives into Austria-Hungary. The assassins, the key members of the clandestine network, and the key Serbian military conspirators who were still alive were arrested, tried, convicted and punished. Those who were arrested in Bosnia were tried in Sarajevo in October 1914. The other conspirators were arrested and tried before a Serbian court on the French-controlled Salonika front in 1916-1917 on unrelated false charges. Serbia executed three of the top military conspirators. Much of what is known about the assassinations comes from these two trials and related records. Background Under the 1878 Treaty of Berlin, Austria-Hungary received the mandate to occupy and administer the Ottoman Vilaya of Bosnia while the Ottoman Empire retained official sovereignty. Under this same treaty, the great powers gave official recognition to the Principality of Serbia as a fully sovereign state which four years later transformed into a kingdom under Prince Milan IV Obrenovic who thus became King Milan I of Serbia. Serbia's monarchs, at the time from the royal house of Obrenovic that maintained close relations with Austria-Hungary, were content to reign within the borders set by the treaty. This changed in May 1903, when Serbian military officers led by Dragutin Dmitrijevic stormed the Serbian royal palace. After a fierce battle in the dark, the attackers captured General Lazar Petrovic, head of the palace guard, and forced him to reveal the hiding place of King Alexander I Obrenovic and his wife Queen Draga. The king and queen opened the door from their hiding place. The king was shot 30 times, the queen 18. Mackenzie writes that the royal corpses were then stripped and brutally sabred. The attackers threw the corpses of King Alexander and Queen Draga out of a palace window, ending any threat that loyalists would mount a counterattack. General Petrovich was then killed too. The conspirators installed Peter I of the House of Karadordovich as the new king. The new dynasty was more nationalist, friendlier to Russia and less friendly to Austria-Hungary. Over the next decade, disputes between Serbia and its neighbours erupted. As Serbia moved to build its power and gradually reclaim its 14th-century empire, these conflicts included a customs dispute with Austria-Hungary beginning in 1906, the Bosnian Crisis of 1908-1909, in which Serbia assumed an attitude of protest over Austria-Hungary's annexation of Bosnia-Herzegovina, and finally the two Balkan Wars of 1912-1913. In which Serbia conquered Macedonia and Kosovo from the Ottoman Empire and drove out Bulgaria. Serbia's military successes and Serbian outrage over the Austro Hungarian annexation of Bosnia Herzegovina emboldened Serbian nationalists in Serbia, and Serbs in Austria Hungary who chafed under Austro Hungarian rule and whose nationalist sentiments were stirred by Serb cultural organizations. 
In the five years leading up to 1914, lone assassins, mostly Serb citizens of Austria-Hungary, made a series of unsuccessful assassination attempts in Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina against Austro-Hungarian officials. The assassins received sporadic support from Serbia. On 15 June 1910, Bogdan Zirajic attempted to kill the iron-fisted governor of Bosnia and Herzegovina, General Marijan Verezanin. Zirajic was a 22-year-old Orthodox Serb from Nevesinj, Herzegovina, who was a student at the Faculty of Law at the University of Zagreb and made frequent trips to Belgrade. The five bullets Zirajic fired at Ferez Arnin and the fatal bullet he put in his own brain made Zirajic an inspiration to future assassins, including Princip and Princip's accomplice Kabrinovic. Princip said that Zirajic was my first model. When I was 17 I passed whole nights at his grave, reflecting on our wretched condition and thinking of him. It is there that I made up my mind sooner or later to perpetrate an outrage. In 1913, Emperor Franz Joseph commanded Archduke Franz Ferdinand to observe the military maneuvers in Bosnia scheduled for June 1914. Following the maneuvers, Ferdinand and his wife planned to visit Sarajevo to open the state museum. Museum in its new premises there, Duchess Sophie, according to their oldest son, Duke Maximilian, accompanied her husband out of fear for his safety. As of Czech Countess, she was treated as a commoner at the Austrian court. Emperor Franz Joseph had only consented to their marriage on the condition that their descendants would never ascend the throne. The 14th anniversary of their morganatic marriage fell on 28 June. As historian A. J. P. Taylor observes, Sophie could never share Franz Ferdinand's rank, could never share his splendors, could never even sit by his side on any public occasion. There was one loophole. His wife could enjoy the recognition of his rank when he was acting in a military capacity. Hence, he decided, in 1914, to inspect the army in Bosnia. There, at its capital Sarajevo, the Archduke and his wife could ride in an open carriage side by side. Thus, for love, did the Archduke go to his death. Franz Ferdinand was an advocate of increased federalism and widely believed to favor trialism, under which Austria-Hungary would be reorganized by combining the Slavic lands within the Austro-Hungarian Empire into a third crown. A Slavic kingdom could have been a bulwark against Serb irredentism, and Franz Ferdinand was therefore perceived as a threat by those same irredentists. Princip later stated to the court that preventing Franz Ferdinand's planned reforms was one of his motivations. The day of the assassination, June 28, is the feast of Saint Vitus. In Serbia, it is called Vidovden and commemorates the 1389 Battle of Kosovo against the Ottomans, at which the Sultan was assassinated in his tent by a Serb. Preliminaries Planning direct action Danilo Ilic was a Bosnian Orthodox Serb. He had worked as a school teacher and as a bank worker but in 1913 and 1914 he lived with and outwardly off his mother, who operated a small boarding house in Sarajevo. Secretly, Ilic was leader of the Serbian irredentist Black Hand Cell in Sarajevo. In late 1913, Danilo Ilic came to the Serbian listening post at Uzis to speak to the officer in charge, Serbian Colonel C. A. Popovic, who was a captain at the time and a member of the Black Hand. Illich recommended an end to the period of revolutionary organization building and a move to direct action against Austria-Hungary. Popovic passed Danilo Illich on to Belgrade to discuss this matter with Chief of Serbian Military Intelligence Colonel Dragutin Dmitrijevic, known more commonly as APUS. By 1913, Apus and his fellow military conspirators had come to dominate what was left of the Black Hand. There are no reports as to what took place between Illich and Apus, but soon after their meeting, Apus's right-hand man and fellow Black Hander, Serbian Major Vojislav Tankarzik, who by this time was in charge of guerrilla training, called a Serbian irredentist planning meeting in Toulouse, France.
Amongst those summoned to the Toulouse meeting was Muhammad Mehmed Basic, a carpenter by trade and son of an impoverished Muslim noble from Herzegovina. He too was a member of the Black Hand, having been sworn into the organization by Black Hand Provincial Director for Bosnia-Herzegovina Vladimir Gacinovic and Danilo Ilic. Mehmed Basic was eager to carry out an act of terrorism to revive the revolutionary spirit of Bosnia. During this January 1914 meeting, various possible Austro-Hungarian targets for assassination were discussed, including Franz Ferdinand. However, the participants decided only to dispatch Mehmed Mehmed Basic to Sarajevo to kill the governor of Bosnia, Oskar Posharek. While Mehmed Basic was traveling to Bosnia-Herzegovina from France, police searched his train for a thief. Thinking the police might be after him, he threw his weapons out the train window. Once he arrived in Bosnia-Herzegovina he had to set about looking for replacement weapons. Franz Ferdinand chosen the search for new weapons delayed Mehmed Basic's attempt on Posharek. Before Mehmed Basic was ready to act, Illich summoned him to Mostar. On 26 March 1914, Illich informed Mehmed Basic that Belgrade had scrapped the mission to kill the governor. The plan now was to murder Franz Ferdinand, and Mehmed Basic should stand by for the new operation. The assassination was planned with the knowledge and approval of the Russian ambassador in Belgrade, Nikolai Hartwig, and the Russian military attaché. In Belgrade, Viktor Artemonov, Illich recruited the Serbian youth Zvaso Kubralovic and C.V. Jerko Popovic shortly after Easter for the assassination. As evidenced by the testimony of Illich, Kubralovic and Popovic at the Sarajevo trial, three youths, Gavrilo Princip, Trifko Grabers, and Nedelko Kabrinovic, Bosnian Serb subjects of Austria-Hungary, living in Belgrade testified at the Sarajevo trial that at about the same time, they were eager to carry out an assassination and approached a fellow Bosnian Serb and former guerrilla fighter known to be well-connected and with access to arms, Milan Siganovic, and through him Major Tankarzik and reached an agreement to transport arms to Sarajevo and participate in the assassination. Agreement in principle was quickly reached, but delivery of the weapons was delayed for more than a month. The assassins would meet with Siganovic and he would put them off. At one point, Siganovic told Grabbers, nothing doing. The old emperor is ill and the heir apparent will not go to Bosnia. When Emperor Franz Joseph's health recovered the operation was of go, again. Tankarzik gave the assassins one FN Model 1910 pistol. They practiced shooting a few rounds of scarce and expensive 380 ACP pistol ammunition in a park near Belgrade. The rest of the weapons were finally delivered on 26 May. The three assassins from Belgrade testified that Major Tankarzik, directly and through Siganovic, not only provided six hand grenades and four new Browning FN Model 1910 automatic pistols with 380 ACP ammunition, but also money, suicide pills, training, a special map with the location of gendarmes marked knowledge of contacts on a clandestine tunnel used to infiltrate agents and arms into Austria-Hungary, and a small card authorizing the use of that tunnel. Major Tankarzik confirmed to the journalist and historian Luciano Magrini that he provided the bombs and pistols and was responsible for training. Princip. Grabbers, and Kabrinovic in that he initiated the idea of the suicide pills. Tunnel Princip. Grabbers and Kabrinovic left Belgrade by boat on 28 May and travelled along the Sava River to Sabak where they handed the small car to Captain Popovic of the Serbian border guard. Popovic, in turn, provided them with a letter to Serbian Captain Provanovic and filled out a form with the names of three customs officials whose identities they could assume and thereby receive discounted train tickets for the ride to Loznica, a small border town. When Princip, Grabbers, and Kabrinovic reached Loznica on 29 May, Captain Provanovic summoned three of his revenue sergeants to discuss the best way to cross the border undetected, while waiting for the sergeants to arrive. 
Prince of Pengrabas had a falling out with Kabrinovich over Kabrinovich's repeated violations of operational security. Kabrinovich handed over the weapons he was carrying to Prince of Pengrabas. Prince of told Kabrinovich to go alone to Zavornik, make an official crossing there using Grabez's ID card and then go on to Tuzla and link back up. On the morning of 30 May Pravanovic's revenue sergeants assembled and Sergeant Budovic GRBIC accepted the task and led Prince of Pengrabas by foot to Izakovic Island, a small island in the middle of the Drina River that separated Serbia from Bosnia. They and their weapons reached the island on 31 May. GRBIC passed the terrorists and their weapons to the agents of the Serbian Narodna Odbrana for transport into Austro-Hungarian territory and from safe house to safe house. Prince of Pengrabas crossed into Austria-Hungary on the evening of 1 June. Prince of Pengrabas and the weapons were passed from agent to agent until on 3 June they arrived in Tuzla. They left the weapons in the hands of the Narodna Odbrana agent Misko Jovanovic and rejoined Kabrinovic. The Narodna Odbrana agents reported their activities to the Narodna Odbrana president, Bozi Jankovic who in turn reported to the then-Serbian caretaker Prime Minister Nikola Pasak. The report to Pasak added the name of a new military conspirator, Serbian Major Kosta Todorovic, Boundary Commissioner and Director of Serbian Military Intelligence Services for the Frontier Line from Rada to Lubofia. Pasik's handwritten notes from the briefing included the nickname of one of the assassins and also the name of Major Tankarzik. The Austrians later captured the report, Pasik's handwritten notes, and additional corroborating documents. Kabrinovic's father was a Sarajevo police official. In Tuzla, Kabrinovic bumped into one of his father's friends, Sarajevo police detective Ivan Vila, and struck up a conversation. By coincidence, Princip, Grabers and Kabrinovic boarded the same train for Sarajevo as Detective Vila. Kabrinovic inquired of the detective the date of Franz Ferdinand's visit to Sarajevo. The next morning, Kabrinovic passed on the news to his fellow assassins that the assassination would be on 28 June. On arriving in Sarajevo on 4 June, Princip, Grabers and Kabrinovic went their separate ways. Princip checked in with the Lich, visited his family in Hatice and returned to Sarajevo on 6 June taking up residence at Ilik's mother's house with Ilich. Grabbers joined his family in Pale. Kabrinovic moved back into his father's house in Sarajevo. On 14 June, Ilich went to Tuzla to bring the weapons to Sarajevo. Misko Jovanovic hid the weapons in a large box of sugar. On 15 June, the two went separately by train to Doboj where Jovanovic handed off the box to Ilich. Later that day, Ilic returned to Sarajevo by train, being careful to transfer to a local train outside Sarajevo and then quickly transfer to a tram to avoid police detection. Once at his mother's house, Ilic hid the weapons in a suitcase under a sofa. Then, on approximately 17 June, Ilic traveled to Broad. Questioned at trial, Ilic gave a confused explanation of the reason for his trip. First saying he had gone to Broad to prevent the assassination and then saying he had returned to Sarajevo from Broad to prevent the assassination. Dediger puts forward the thesis that Illich went to Broad to meet an emissary of Apis, Juro Arak, who had instructions to cancel the assassination and then later Rade Malo Babic was dispatched from Serbia to Sarajevo to reauthorize the assassination. Eve of the attack Silic began handing out the weapons on 27 June. Until 27 June Illich had kept the identities of the assassins from Belgrade secret from those he had recruited locally and vice versa. Then, that night, as Mehmed Basic told Albertini, on the eve of the outrage Illich introduced me to Princip in a Sarajevo cafe with the words Mehmed Basic who tomorrow is to be with us. The three sent a postcard to Black Hand Provincial Director for Bosnia-Herzegovina Vladimir Gacinovic in France. 
The following morning, on 28 June 1914, Illich positioned the six assassins along the motorcade route. Illich walked the street, exhorting the assassins to bravery.